for many of you, you've got new love that's going to be on the horizon, okay? I feel like if it's not coming in for this month, it's going to round out the year with you in a new relationship. So um, that means, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the great big love. And so you want to make yourself energetically like prepared for it, okay? Um, when we want to attract people that are good for us, when we want to attract positive things, when we want to manifest, you know, the right relationship partner, the right job, energetically, we have to be in a space where we are able and, and ready to receive it. So you can send, you know, all the, the messages out to the universe. I want a girlfriend. I want a boyfriend. I want a relationship partner. I want a husband, a wife, somebody that would marry me, somebody that would be, you know, uh, in a relationship with me. But at the same time, if you keep like contacting exes or if you keep dating around and, and willingly put yourself in situations and with people that are not right for you, then you're kind of working at cross purposes with yourself. So be very, very careful about energetically what you're sending out to the universe and whether or not you are ready to receive what you're asking for. So we have a, um, you know, it's just like the, the rules of attraction. You just need to be emotionally, physically, financially, where you need to be to be ready to receive what the universe has in store for you. This is the same way in which we can attract, you know, the right jobs, the right friends, the right relationship partner. It's all the same laws of attraction, okay? So um, what's happening for you guys? I have here your energy, which is really positive. It's one of the best cards in the deck. We have the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune in this spread, um, basically, it, it's sort of like things are finally coming full circle. You can close out a chapter in your life and you can begin anew. You've come to the realization that many of you need to take a more um, realistic, pragmatic approach when it comes to love and relationships. So that means, you know, not going out looking for people to have a good time with and being realistic that, yes, if I search for people that I can have a really fun time with, they might not be, you know, stable long-term partners. Coming to a sense of uh, maturity when it comes to your relationships I need to love and cherish and take care of the people that mean a lot to me while they're in the picture because they might not be around. Because the, the nature of this Wheel of Fortune is it keeps moving, it keeps turning. So even if you don't believe in, you know, uh, forever after uh, permanence that relationships are supposed to, you know, um, we're supposed to carry the same relationship into our old age. We're supposed to settle down with one person and, you know, that would be our happily ever after. Even if you don't believe in those things, you at least come into the awareness that people come into our lives for a time and a season. And sometimes they bring lessons. Other times they bring whatever it is that we need in that moment in time. And then other times they bring nothing but chaos. And so recognizing the relationship for what it is, recognizing that, okay, this person is, is, learn, is teaching me how to love. And, you know, once you've learned that, you let that relationship go rather than cling on to it. And then you move on to your next relationship so you can expand and you can keep growing so you can keep embodying this energy. And then the next relationship, okay, this person's a little bit too unstable. They're destabilizing my financial sector. They're making me question my reality and recognizing that it's a toxic relationship. And despite the emotional highs and lows and despite the adrenaline rush and despite, you know, the chemistry, it might not be good for me. So I need to kind of release it through the process of understanding why certain relationships happen and why certain patterns reoccur in your relationship sector. You learn a lot more about yourself. You learn a lot more about what you need to be happy. And as a result of it, I feel like many of you have climbed over a very, very steep learning curve when it comes to your love life. And I'm not going to lie. I feel like you've been through a lot. The Wheel of Fortune is not a light card, okay? It's somebody that has been through like the emotional lows and the really high intense highs in the relationship. And the wheel keeps turning. Does it mean that it's going to land you in the same emotional low space again in the future? It could if you're not making the right decisions. 
It could if you allow the wrong people into your life. But at the same time, it promises there will be a very emotionally fulfilling partner that's going to be in store for you. But you need to sever ties with the past. You need to start with a clean slate. And you need to really believe that you deserve it in order for you to be able to attract it, right? And that's where I feel many of you are at right now. Your relationship sector is going to, if you're in a relationship already, it's really going to take off. And it's really going to promise a lot of stability. And then on the other hand, for those who are single, learning from relationships past, identifying patterns, identifying patterns, and not let these patterns repeat, will promise to bring into the picture for you something that is everlasting and something that will be kind of like that meets your intensity without the drama okay so i have something that's really good and and in store for you so this is the person that you're dealing with i have here the ace of cups okay this is beautiful 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 energy and uh, when i look at the ace of cups as it represents a person this is somebody with a lot of love to give they have a lot of uh, affection they're quite possibly very, very beautiful. They're quite beautiful, even though we don't see a face to this card, right? But the fact that they're overflowing with joy and contentment and just, you know, love for life and love for people and they care about people and they're a good-hearted person, it guarantees that they're going to attract amazing, beautiful things to their lives, right? And I feel like for some of you, uh, this is like your relationship partner holding you in really, really high regards. I see a lot of pictures taken. It's like they're proud to have you on their arms. They're proud to call you their man or their woman. And they're really proud to be seen with you. And they see you as the apple of their eye. And they see you as, you know, everything they've hoped and dreamed for. And because of that, you're operating from this space here of really intense emotional highs, okay? So for those in relationships, you're with somebody who is potentially like this, the king of pentacles, earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is someone who's protective, who will fight for you, who will, you know, give you their jacket when you're cold. And you don't even have to be um, a, a female dating a male, I feel like it doesn't even matter because they are that into you. They want to take care of you. They want to build up their wealth, not only for themselves, but to give you everything that you, they, they want to build up the wealth, not just for themselves, but to give you everything that you've ever wanted. If you want that car, no, not a problem. You want that house, I'm going to work overtime for years and years and years to give you that house. And because they see something in you. And also, I feel like the person that you're dealing with, um, there's an element here of dark hair, dark skin, and very handsome, okay? This is my classic handsome person. Someone who's beautiful, someone who's handsome. But, like, there's an element of exoticness about them. So they could be, you know, um, dark hair, dark eye, dark, darker skin, darker complexion. And they're just really, uh, they take good care of their bodies. They, um, they exercise, they work out, they look really good in, in whatever they wear. They look really good. But this is a, a, usually a person that cares about the way they dress, okay? So they're very stylish, not flamboyant or extravagant, but they're very, very um, stylish. They might get their nails done, they might get their hair done, but it's all like um, in muted colors, in very uh, strong earth tones, okay? In, in nudes or in strong earth tones. And it's somebody that, you know, they see the proper value in people and things. So this is not somebody that, you know, will... Um, if they see, for example, you're in a relationship with them and you have been for 10 years... If they see an attractive man or attractive uh, younger woman uh, walk away, uh, walk by, they're not going to, you know, um, run off and, and, and have like a one night stand with that woman and forsake everything that they built up with you. This is a person that sees the proper value in situations, in people and in things. And it makes them a really good partner because they have endurance. They will stay around when things get rough. And they will be there for you when you need them. So it might not even have to be, you know, like an earth sign. But they have the qualities that they're stable, they're secure. 
they see the value in you and they're going to be around. They're going to stick around. And I feel like there is a lot of love, a lot of, this is like a, a the big love, okay? The, the love that will sustain you throughout a lifetime. There's enough of it to last throughout your life where you don't need to find another person to replenish. And it's the great love and it needs to be treated with kitty gloves, okay? The vase is uh, very fragile. It can be broken, okay? So if you go around swandering this love, uh, you're making a big mistake. If you're going around, you know, not seeing the value in it, I feel like the other person is going to quickly be very disappointed and move away. And if you go around, you know, um, abusing it, it's never going to be the same. It's never going to be put back together in the same way. And that vase, once it's broken, is not going to be that um, receptacle for that love, that, that water that's overflowing, okay? So, Scorpio, um, your luck is turning on the love front. I feel like for couples, it's a really, really fortunate time for people who are single. You have something coming in for you, but you need to be emotionally ready, okay? You need to be ready with self-love. You need to be ready to see it and recognize it for what it is when it comes into the picture for you so that you can properly cherish it, okay? Um, I have another character that's in the picture, and this is somebody you need to move away from, okay? I have a water sign, uh, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and then I have an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. And let me talk about this air sign first because um, his energy is stronger, so we have an air sign here, and this is somebody who's trying to move on with their life. They're forging ahead. They're charging ahead, okay? And this is more of a friendship vibe that I'm getting from this air sign here. The page of uh, cups energy is one that is, uh, hey, I like you, you like me, let's, you know, grab lunch sometime. It's a very, like, the beginning, a precursor to something. But it doesn't guarantee that big love, okay? Because it's a very friendly, trying to make connections, trying to get to know people. So in a way, it could like end up being friendship. It could be very, very platonic as well. It doesn't guarantee anything stable because the energy is the page, okay? This is somebody that you might have moved away from. You're taking your heart away and you're moving forward with your life. You're moving towards somebody that is a lot more stable, that's going to give you a lot more reciprocity, that will treasure your heart and that will, you know, see the value in it, okay? Whereas with this air sign, I feel like he's not even, um, you know, riding the horse on land. He's just like in the air, just riding his horse. So this is somebody that's very out of reach, very out of reach. Their energy is very confrontational, very directed. They have a, an agenda. They get things done. They move on with their lives. And I feel like they're, uh, they're very impatient as well. So if things are not working, they move on to the next thing. So they might not see the proper value in people, places, and situations the way that this next person is going to. And I feel like they might not have that sustaining power. They're not like sturdy and solid and can withstand a lot of adversity the way that this person might be able to. And as a result of it, I feel like you need to make sure that you're allowing the right people in. So if somebody doesn't have the sustaining power, you might want to leave them alone, okay? Um, and I also have here a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. I feel like this is somebody who's like... Um, who's the energy I'm getting is like um, they they do things under the pretense of friendship but deep down they have a lot of feelings for you so Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon are rising so they do things they're like hey um, a bunch of um, you know a bunch of my friends and I are going to a concert you want to come with us when in fact they want to isolate you exclusively to themselves like they want you to be there but they don't they're fearful of rejection or it's too new and they don't know how you feel about them yet. So they want to, you know, pass things off as, hey, it's just a, a friendly invitation. Do you want to come? So it's sort of like that, testing the waters with you. This can be someone who's very sweet, okay? Like they're friendly. They have a good heart. They're easy to talk to. Uh, they're quite fun. 
And so if there's an invitation, you definitely want to take up this offer because I feel like they're doing things under the disguise of friendship and camaraderie and, um, you know, that platonic um, intentions. But I feel like they are interested. They, they find you attractive, okay? Um, singles. You've definitely got your eyes on somebody that you're really attracted to and interested in. But I feel like there might be some communication barriers or the person, you know, as the king, uh, as an earth sign and also a king. They're going to be slow to act. They're not going to, you know, rush right in and sweep you off your feet, even though this person is very romantic, very, very, very romantic. Um, but they need to open up first before they you can start to see that romantic side to them. They're very sarcastic as well and they look at life through a realistic lens so you know they're not going to be head over heels they're constantly assessing you and appraising you and um, it takes a lot for them to get involved so I feel like if you've got that person you definitely are very very interested in them um, things are going to take some time and you know they're not going anywhere they're earth signs they're slow moving they're not going anywhere you don't have to chase after them you know consistently um, but I definitely feel you you feel this way about somebody and somebody feels this way about you for those who are in a coupled relationship, okay? Other areas of your life, um, you have some good things, but um, I'm trying to draw out the, the message that I got when I was, um, when I shuffled it out, there was a message and I can't remember. Let me see here. Let me just talk about the cards. Maybe it will come back to me. So we have here the Nine of Pentacles, self-employment. This is um, sailing away or uh, rather flying over financial worries, okay? So this is a really, really good card. Flying over uh, trouble, like um, financial like troubles. So either way, it's, it's almost like a person that tends to their garden, they water it, they nurture it, they feed it, and they take pride and satisfaction in the fact that everything is thriving, everything is abundant, everything is just uh, as it should be. And so I feel like for many of you, life is going quite well. You know, you have your routine. Of course, you have your routine. Many of you are probably outdoors digging for stuff or like um, planting things or overseeing a garden and, and tending to things. And then I also feel if you have um, if you have Taurus, if you're dealing with a Taurus or you have a Taurus um, moon or sun or rising, I feel like you're very, very focused on um, gardening. OK, and then I'm also sensing as well, you know, this is just um, having projects that are planned out, working on a commission scale, being uh, self-employed, dictating your own hours, coming and going as you please. So there's a lot of freedom here. And this is you at your best because you're not bogged down by anything heavy. You're traveling light and you have a lot of abundance, you know, underneath you that you can pluck at any time. So this is a very carefree, finally, a very carefree state that you're in. Uh, the person that allows this abundance to come into the picture, we have here the lovers. This is the card of Gemini. So you might have um, a relationship partner that really facilitates this process for you. It's like two people pooling their resources together. And as a result, there's a lot more abundance. There's a lot more in the pool that we can draw from. You might also be in a partnership uh, with a Gemini. And I feel like the process is becoming a lot better as a result. It's, it's like two people shouldering the burden. Uh, rather than, you know, one person having to do it themselves. But then I also feel when you do things on your own, you're a lot more successful. If it's a Gemini that you're dealing with, Gemini is a sign of duality. They're the sign of the twins. They need another person. So they might cling on to this partnership out of that sense of security. When in fact, when you're by yourself, you're a lot better. You're a lot better off. Your decisions are always on point. You have a really good, you know, keen eye to assess things and situations and people accurately. So when you're alone and doing whatever you need to do, 
you're a lot better. You're a lot more financially stable. It's also when you get into relationships as well. That's when it's, you know, the Scorpio rules the eighth house. It deals with joint, joint resources. It can be detrimental when you're sharing resources with someone who's not giving back. And then in business partnership, it can be really detrimental when the give and take is not balanced out. Okay? So this is like balancing out the give and take, but at the same time, coming to the realization that maybe there's something, a partnership, a crutch or something that's done out of this sense of familiarity or a sense of security, but it's really keeping your life in limbo, in suspension, kind of stuck. Okay, so there's an element here that you need to kind of examine. You're doing something or you're clinging on to something or you have something in your life and it's very familiar and it's very stable. You think it's stable, but it's keeping you in a state of limbo. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. So maybe that's confirmation. I don't know. Um, so really look at it and, and try to figure out, you know, if that's something worth checking out, okay? Ask yourself, is it really holding me back or is it, you know, giving me stability? If it's really holding you back, maybe it's time to look at other options. Maybe it's time to, you know, really think about truly being self-employed, okay? And then removing yourself from this state of limbo and suspension where you've been weighing out the pros and cons, where you've been kind of like managing uh, possibly the work project for both parties and um, figuring out whether or not it's fair to with the justice card here. Okay, so this is the hangman and the justice card. Are things balanced and are things fair? It's one person doing a lot of the work and the other person's just chilling, just hanging out. So these are things that you want to really look at. And then I also feel as well, we have the strength card. The strength card deals with it's attraction. And um, I'm not reading so much as the, you know, the, the love energy that's coming into this. But this is also like, there's great chemistry between you and another person. And I feel like you might be dealing with someone as well who might be going through divorce and marriages or, or a separation in, or problems in their marriage. And I feel like there's a lot of flirtation happening from people around you to you. So they're kind of flocking to you. So with the strength card and the lovers, it seems to me as if there are things that there are people that are just coming at you left and right. And you're trying to keep yourself focused. You're trying to keep yourself, you know, kind of like balanced and like, I'm not going to go there because they seem like they have another relationship or they seem like they're in a marriage. And I feel like it's a month where you are, it's a week where you're going to have, get a lot of unwanted attention. Okay. And do what you may, but, um, I feel like there's, if you're in a relationship already, your partner, um, sees the value in you. And, you know, the fact that you have a lot of suitors just confirms that, okay? 